In this video, I will show how to play any Skylanders game from the Wii on your PC using Dolphin. But not just that, you can use your portal to play with your own Skylander figures, and this tutorial will use the Portal of Power. It requires a homebrewed Wii with a spare SD card or USB, as you will need to dump your physical games onto it. Let's get into this tutorial on a different game. You will need to have Clean Rip on your homebrewed Wii. I've linked an easy guide in the description if you've never homebrewed your Wii before. All the stuff done in this video is completely legal. So for this video, I'm doing Sparrow's Adventure, which is the first Skylanders game, but you can do any other game, including Giant Swap Force and potentially even Trap Team, and also Superchargers, and I think you can even do Imaginators on the Wii U. You're going to make sure you have your physical disc, and you're going to put it into your console. You're going to make sure that the game fully loads up like this, and then you want to head over to the Homebrew channel. Start up the Homebrew channel, and then wait till it loads up. You then want to unplug your SD card from your Wii console. Once you've unplugged your SD card, you want to put it into a USB to SD card adapter and then plug it straight into your PC. You then want to click the first link in my description. You'll be taken to the Clean Rip GitHub website. You then want to scroll down until you find the 2.1.1 version. You'll see the zip file. Click on it and it will start installing. Then you want to click on the Show in Folder icon. And from there, you want to right click on it, go to WinRAR and click on Extract to Clean Rip with the backslash. Once you click on that, it will become a folder. Open the folder and then copy this folder and this file. You want to right click and then click on the copy icon and then open it up. And from there, you want to right click and then press on paste. And just like that, it should be copied over. Once you've done that, you want to go to the bottom right of your taskbar and click on the arrow icon pointing up the way. It will say show hidden icons, so you want to click on that. And then you'll see the USB icon, right click on it and then click on eject right here. Then you can now take it out your PC and then all you need to do is plug the SD card back into your Wii and then you'll see the clean rip icon. Click on it and then press on load. From there it will load up and it will say disclaimer, the offer is not responsible for any damages that could occur to any removable device used within this program. Press A to continue and then it will say enable check some calculations. Click on yes and then it will say please select the device type. Now this depends on what you're using to actually get the files for the game for Skylanders. So if you're using like a USB flash drive or even a hard drive, you can click on this option. Or if you're using an SD card like me, you'll click on the front SD option. So I'm going to use that. And for me, I'm using the SD card option. So I'm going to click on front SD. Once you click on that, it will say insert an SD FAT32 formatted device. Press on A to continue. And then it will say redump.org dat files not found. Download them now, you want to press on yes. This will only work if you have an internet connection on your Wii. If it doesn't like me, it will say the network failed. Then it will say to insert a GameCube or a Wii disc. Press on A to continue and make sure you have inserted the disc. As you can see, it is now loading up the disc. You will hear it coming from your Wii, spinning about. And from there, it will come up on the screen with a setup. Now make sure you copy my settings exactly so you do not mess anything up in this process. It will say dual layer, make sure to keep this at no. Then you want to go to the chunk size and you want to make that the maximum. You can use a d-pad to move about and you can go and make sure it says max. And then for the new device per chunk, make sure you set this to no. Once you've done that, all you need to do now is press A to continue one last time. It will say to remember the settings. I recommend pressing yes to this option if you want to dump more Skylander games without having to complete the same settings over and over again. So press on yes and it will start dumping it. Now it should take around half an hour to dump, and you'll see here that it will show the estimated time of how long it will take to dump. And like I said, it should take around 30 minutes. That's how long it took for me to dump giants. Now whilst this is dumping in the background, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up the portal of power. Make sure the portal of power works on the Wii beforehand. This does not work on an Xbox 360 or an Xbox One portal, and this method will be shown on a wired portal of power, not a wireless one. But I do not know if that works for that. If it does work, please let me know in the comments down below, but what you're going to do is you're going to plug your portal of power into your PC. You can use any of the USB ports, and you should see it come up at the bottom right. It should say Spiral Porta or Spiral Portal. Let me now show you what you're going to do. You're going to click the second link in my description, which will take you to Zadig. You then want to scroll down till you find the download tab. Click on this Zadig file, and from there you want to save it onto your computer. You then want to open up the exe. It will then give you this pop-up. You want to click on yes right here. And then once you have the program open, you want to click on options. Then click on list all devices. And from there, you can click here and you'll find all of your devices, including the spiral porta. 
This is the portal. You want to make sure that you're on this and from there it will say that your driver will be something completely different. Now you can make it win USB or if that does not work you can make it this one right here. I'm going to try this one and see if it works and if it doesn't I'll just switch back over to the win USB. Click on replace driver and let it install. Now you will see that your portal will flash, it will kind of turn off and then it will turn back on. Whilst it's installing the driver, it will say that installation can take some time but it usually doesn't take that long to install. And let me know if this video does actually do well, I might even make more Skylanders content or even content on other games. And as you can see the driver was installed, you want to click on close. And from there you'll see that the driver is on this and that's all you need to do for the portal you now want to head over to the dolphin emulator website you want to click on the download button and from there you want to find the latest release click on windows x64 and then it will start downloading then you'll have the 7z file which has all of the dolphin files in it you want to click on this folder icon right here and from there you want to right click and you want to go down to winrar and you want to click on extracted dolphin backslash and from there it will start extracting. This can take a little bit, but it shouldn't take too long to extract. Then you want to go into your search bar, type in Dolphin. And from there you'll find the folder. You want to double click on it. Then you want to click on the Dolphin x64 folder. And then you want to find the Dolphin.exe. Double click on that. And it should open Dolphin. Now as you can see I already do have Skylanders Giants on here. I have played through it and it's actually insane. Whilst I'm waiting for this to install, I'm going to show you guys how to get the portal set up and also get the best graphics on this game. To make sure you have the best experience whilst playing Skylanders on your PC. By the way, you can also do this on a laptop, just make sure it has USB ports. And I don't know if a USB-C to USB-A will work, but I guess you guys have to find out on your own. You want to go to the config, and then you want to click on Wii. And then you'll find the whitelisted USB pass-through devices. This is a section that you're going to use to add the portal. You're going to click on the add button right here. And from there you should find the Skylanders portal. You want to click on it and make sure the USB ID is the same for both as it shows here. Click on the add button and there you go. That's literally all you need to do. After you set up the portal I recommend heading over to the graphics tab. From there you want to click on enhancements and you'll find the internal resolution. Make sure to set that to a really high resolution that you want. Make sure to not do it above 8K because that's usually not supported in a majority of the Skylanders games and it will just lag the system. I recommend going for 3 times or 4 times native. At the moment I'm at 4 times native and it looks amazing. So click on that. And the anti-aliasing should be set at none. You want to make sure that that's set at around 8 times MSAA. Click on that and that makes sure that the graphics will be really good. Now this depends on your specs, obviously I've got a gaming PC so this should run really well. You can mess about with the settings here if you want, but just click on close. Then you want to click on controllers, and then you'll find Wii remotes and make sure that the Wii remote 1 is set to emulated Wii remote. Click on configure, and then you'll have all these settings. If you have your own controller plugged in, you can click on the device section and you'll see the controller here. And from there you can set the binds, but for the moment I'm going to go to reset and click on default. And from there, you'll have the settings at default for keyboard and mouse. I recommend actually playing this on keyboard and mouse as it is a lot of fun. You want to make sure that the settings are set correctly and go to motion simulation and make sure when you press the middle mouse button that this does move. So that makes sure that when you're actually in game, you're able to throw things and all that. Then go back to general and options and make sure the extension is set to nunchuck. Once that's done, go to extension. And from there, make sure the up, down, left and right are set to W, S, A and D. These are the common settings used for the joystick for it to actually move around. You want to have the buttons as well. So you have C set to left control, which is at the bottom left of the keyboard. And Z set to left shift, which is also at the bottom left of the keyboard. And now all we need to do is wait for it to dump. As you can see it's now finally finished. It says copy completed in 30 minutes. Press A. So I'm going to press A to continue. And then it will say dump another disk. I just recommend pressing B to exit. And it should close the application. All you need to do now is grab your SD card out of your Wii again. Just like so. And plug it back into your PC. Go back to your file explorer and you're going to find your Wii SD card. You're going to open it and you're going to scroll down until you find two ISO files right here. They should be in two parts. You're going to copy these files and put them over into a new folder. Click on new and then click on folder. And you can call whatever you want. I'm just going to call it games. And from there I'm going to double click on the folder. 
And then all you really need to do is just grab the two files and then drag them over into the dolphin folder. And from there, it will copy the two over. It should take about a minute or two to copy over. And whilst we're doing that, you should go into your games folder and then click on the top of here. You should have this wee search bar and type in CMD. Once you type that in, you should get the command prompt coming up. Wait until it's done copying over the two files into this new folder on your PC. And once these two files are copied over to your PC, you want to go over to the command prompt and you want to paste this command in. This will grab the two files and make them into one file. So press on enter and make sure this is right. You can copy it from the description and just paste it in with control V into the command prompt. Press on enter and it should take a couple of minutes. Whilst you're waiting, head over to Dolphin and then click on config again. You want to go over to paths. Then press on add. From there, you want to find the games folder. Double click on it and click on select folder. And then that's it. Now all you need to do is wait for this to go into one file. And I forgot to mention, you can now turn off your Wii console. You don't need to turn it on again unless you want to dump another file. And once it's finished, it will say one file has copied over. You can then just close the command prompt. And as you can see, you have the game ISO right here. I do recommend just deleting the two parts right here. And from there, as you can see, we have Spyro's Adventure. If I double click on it and you may get warnings on your screen, just press ignore for this session. And as you can see, your portal should light up. That means that it should have worked. You can see we're on the Wii menu screen. And as you can see, there is Spiral's Adventure. It is working on my PC. And you don't get any pop-ups telling you to insert a portal because it actually already comes up. So obviously I'm gonna have to show you guys that it does work with the goat himself. I'm gonna place him on and as you can see, there he is. There is Tree Rex, be afraid of the bug. And look at the graphics on this game. This looks so good. Maybe even now. Oh. And as you can see, we are in game now. I can move about with W, A, S, and D. I can click my mouse to do like a smash attack, and I can hold the right click to do this as well. And yes, it does actually fully work. If I take off the scalander off the portal, it does go away. And I'm going to put on trigger happy. And as you can see, there he comes up on the screen and he works the exact same way. You can see at the bottom as well, he's level 12, he's got the amount of coins. So that does mean that I can literally use him and play other games. Like I can go on my Xbox 360, play Skylanders, and I'll also still have the progress from this emulator. So as you can see, it says to press C on your nunchuck. So that's the control button for me. And then it says to shake. What you do is you press the middle mouse button on your mouse. You Once you click that, you spam click it. And as you can see, you can hold it and then you click it again to throw it, which is really cool. That's a neat feature and you don't need to do that. So I think maybe even on like controllers, you may be able to shake the controller and it's able to work. Same with the cannon. I can click on the cannon, pressing control and it works just like that. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this different type of tutorial. Make sure you guys like and subscribe with notifications turned on. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. If this does well, I'll make more videos on it.